This FCS football picks week two edition of the sports gambling broadcast is brought to you by BetQL. BetQL is your home for the info you need to make yourself a smarter, better college basketball, NBA and NHL, whatever the sport they got you covered. Plus use promo code SGP 30 for 30% off their premium data. Just go to BetQL.com promo code SGP 30. That's BetQL.com promo code SGP 30. We're also brought to you by better than Vegas. Better than Vegas is the home Rabbit sports betters providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks. Better than Vegas, it's like YouTube for sports betting. Make sure to subscribe to our page so you don't miss a pick. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge is a stock exchange for sports bets, allowing you to buy and sell betting positions like a stock market. The best part is it allows you to bet with no VIG. That's right. No big betting that's legal in 40 states. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP for a free $10 bet. That's B E T T O R edge.com, promo code S G P. Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. It's happening, uh. Kramer Dog. Uh, if, you know what? It's been a long day, Sean. It is the content train. The engine has needed coal all goddamn day. <laughs> we uh, oh. we it, w- on a double header, really a triple header because we taped we taped uh, the latest and greatest edition of Let It Ride in the morning. We were live doing the Carson Wentz trade, NFL win totals, and talking to a curler. <laughs> Uh, Tyler oh, George, sorry. gold Did, medal curler. Were you discussing gold medals uh, with the, this morning with with a with a curl? Of, I mean, curlers seem like good dudes. Yeah, like good dude uh, factor is uh, like yeah, nine and a half. Yeah, he had a. Uh, I, I I forget Tom how Tom Brady get, not a curler. Not a <laughs> I curler. forgot I forgot how we got into the conversation, but he was comparing golf to curling, and you know, just basically threw out like, hey. Oh. What kind of uh, golfer could you compare the average curler to? And John Daly was immediately brought up, so that was that was great and uh, awesome, awesome episode. Make sure you check that out. But we're here talking FCS football. Joining us via remote, Colby Dan, aka the Dan to Base. What's happening, Colby? I uh, just love a, a John Daly introduction. You know what I mean? I feel like <laughs> I somewhat got one there. Hashtag uh, Dejans only. As a guy who was in a Hooters in Daytona Beach, Florida, about 20 <laughs> years ago, oh yeah, where, where John Daly came up to me and I was too hungover to notice it was John Daly and asked me if I would like to purchase one of his gloves signed for 20 bucks, and I uh, I told him to shoo away because I thought it was some like homeless guy asking me something. And then uh, the, my waitresses uh, let me know that he's allowed to be here. He's drinking free beer because he did a Hooters commercial. And I was like, well, he's actually a genius. You know? <laughs> uh, that really is an all timer. That is very similar thing happened to me in Atlantic city, but it was a crackhead with a monopoly board. <laughs> so that, that's pretty crazy. I mean, John Daly, the lows are low. Lows are low, but I, I'm sure Colby is regretting not buying that John Daly, uh, John Daly glove because that would be great in the new office. Was Kramer. it the Players Champ? It was one of the majors, maybe recently, where he he uh, he he was put up at the local Indian casino because uh, they let him play as many rounds as he wanted to practice, but he was really just there to play blackjack. <laughs> what, what was for me was the waitresses seemed like they were disgusted that he's there every day hammered. <laughs> Talking to their clientele that is a disgusting. I mean, act. takes a lot to discuss the Hooter well, waitress. Thankfully, John Daly came when he did because, I mean, he, it, John Daly in 2020 <laughs> would have been canceled real quick. Cancel culture would not be kind to of John Daly. Real quick. Oh man, and uh, we're talking FCS football. You can see if we're, you're watching on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast. <laughs> we're live. And I'm rocking my Austin P jersey. Nice. It, it is. Let's it, go, Governors. <laughs> I, they got a sweet little Governors logo on the side. Yeah. Little, John I, checking in on the YouTube chat saying sick jersey. It is it is hot red. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Yeah. Hot, 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 hot. Dude, I'm on the YouTube chat, man. I can't tell. Is that Gavin Newsom or Sean Stack in the Money <laughs> Green? Oh, oh. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. Gavin Newsom is a handsome man. <laughs> and uh, unlike Gavin Newsom, I care about uh, California oh, and this wow. great country. <laughs> the, the lady who sent uh, the Austin P jersey 
I was like, thank you for supporting my Austin P store. If you uh, we're here to help you meet all your Austin P needs, <laughs> go govs and like signs this handwritten note. I felt bad, but uh, I'm all uh, aboard the governor's small, train, small business, Sean, small, small business, B to B. I love it. Just don't fly to Cancun before the FCS weekend. <laughs> right? Wow. Wow. Covering a lot it's of ground. Hot, it's hot over here. Keep, keep your head down. First up, we got to recap week one, and it was week one, not week zero, as as Ryan tried to uh, right. convince people that it was week zero. You have to have more games than the week number. <laughs> I'm making that rule. You have to have more games. Than We're the week. calling this week two. I think FCS has decided to call it week two. Week one, though, what a battle! What a game! McNeese State pulls it out, never a doubt All in timer. double overtime, covering that two and a half. Well, winning by three points. What better way to draw people into a new experience? Football yes. in the spring, college football in the spring, than have the most ridiculous bad beat you could have. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 40 to 37 McNeese state. When it all started with an interception that should have been a roughing the, I mean, a roughing the passer that would have been an interception. I, I mean, it's an unbelievable string of events. It's it's Falcons 28, three S it was, it was pretty awesome uh, as a guy who I didn't really have much hope on the bet until <laughs> Colby tweeted out that he was eight and one with his college basketball, <laughs> as well as having Tarleton state uh, getting the points, basically writing that in as a victory already saying his lock and hit. And of course we didn't Ryan, I, I instructed you before we started the podcast to grade McNeese state as a lock for me because there is only one pick on the, on the week. And thus McNeese state automatically becomes my lock. I want it reflected in my lock record because I want it. I, okay. <laughs> I want my lock record to reflect that 100%. I had McNeese State minus two. Look, it was a great, you know, talk about it. I mean, I, that's the kind of run that I want. Like, oh. that's kind of, you're getting into betting on, but we talked about this, right? Like, yep. you want to, you want 3%, go, go buy a fucking CD. If you want to feel like that feeling, the same. I mean, we watched it today. Uh, we watched the, uh, the rover land on Mars and that feeling, those scientists. Mm. They had that same feeling, that feeling when you're at the craps table, the dice are in the air. That's what you, Sean got to experience. I, I mean, wish I had that NASA reaction it, gif <laughs> when uh, McNeese stayed hit because I would have been firing that <laughs> thing, firing on all cylinders. Uh, they, you know, they could have been watching that hell of a back door, hell of a back door. <laughs> all right, let's get to the, which picks. by the way, real quick. I know I claimed the vandals last week, but since I, I I have I have been dubbed the SoCon specialist, I feel like it's only right that I also have a team in the SoCon. So Wofford is gonna I'm 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 taking Wofford too. I don't so give a shit. You're getting off Idaho. You can uh, only have one team, right? Uh, right? This isn't Colby in the XFL where <laughs> he has four teams and there's eight teams. All right, I am officially switching. Uh, I'll allow you to switch because we haven't had a uh, a game yet for I, Idaho. I'm officially or- gonna switch to Wofford. Uh, Wait. You're going with the high school offense, the triple option. <laughs> I'm going to Wofford. Yes, I, I've done a little bit of research on it. I feel like that's the exact kind of offense that can excel at this level. Well, and, uh, and but mostly, I just needed to get I, I, the SoCon has really just been tickling my fancy over the past couple of days in the basketball rank. So I had to go there. I had to, I Wofford won me some money in basketball a couple nights ago as a lock. Sean, feel free to play the sound effect. I know it's all about your self touting, but other guys on the team did well, Sean, no I in team. All right. Always down to town for the team. So Kramer <laughs> is officially a Wofford fan. Colby oh, is, jersey, is rocking with the Delaware and the blue hens and me, you know, Austin P the governors. Before we get to the picks, want to shout out BeckQL.com. That's right, baby. BeckQL. That's smarter, not harder. BeckQL has got you covered. Scanning thousands of data points, giving you that sweet, sweet algorithm action. Telling, you know, giving you some recommendations, pulling some deep trends, a lot of nuggets, see where the sharp money is on, uh, you know, see where the squares are at. Kind of a, a, a collection of a bunch of good tools. And uh, again, you can download the app in the Google play store or uh, app app store. As you know, just look up at QL completely free to download the app. They have a bunch of free stuff and highly recommend the premium package as well. 
very affordable and even more affordable when you use a promo code SGP 30 for 30% off your first subscription. That's promo code SGP 30 over at betql.com college basketball, NBA, NHL. They got you covered over betql.com promo code S G P 30. Kramer, let's do it. Let's talk FCS week two. A lot of good games. Starting off with an 18 point spread. Davidson heads over to Elon, North Carolina. Elon laying 18 at home. Huge number to get this uh, this going. Colby, what are you doing here? Well, I mean, th- this is too big of a number, right? Look, as a at look, I think the college experience is, uh, was a pioneering podcast. The first mm. to really handicap every single college football and college basketball <laughs> that I know of, right? Well, Davidson resides in the Pioneer Football League, and yeah. they went eight and four. Colby, you there? We have lost Colby. <laughs> Colby, are you there? Look at that. I'm here. He's back. I'm here. All right. Davidson at uh, Elon. You can you can re-pick it up. People on YouTube are enjoying yeah. this live fuck up. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh Davidson is it was eight and four a season ago. Elon had a losing record in the CAA. I know the CAA is better than the Pioneer League, but when you go into the Davidson schedule here, they, they didn't really lose that many big games. They lost one, and that was at San or to San Diego by twenty. The rest, like a two point loss to Campbell, a six point loss to Maris, a three point loss to Drake. They're gonna cover this line. Give me the Wildcats and the eighteen. Steph Curry, look, he's gonna channel that yeah. energy down there to uh, <laughs> to to, to well, the football program. Well, you're talking about Steph Curry. He can hit some, uh, you know, deep shots, and and you know who else can hit deep shots? The quarterback for Davidson, Tyler Phelps. He's got a knack for the deep ball. He can he can get some deep shots, according to stuff I've read on the internet. And he can he can hit you with the. He's a little bit mobile quarterback as well. I'm with you, Colby. I think Davidson can put up enough points to be a frisky dog and kind of be in this game. Kramer, are you with us? Uh, I think there's a principle you have to take into the first week of spring football. Uh, a lot of these places, again, we we highlighted this in our preview, right? Colder weather, usually it's summer. Uh, muscles are warmer, uh, and people are still getting hurt. So now we have a situation where it's it's colder in some of these places, and I think it's crazy to lay a big number with anyone. I think it's apps. I think anytime you're dealing with a big number, I'm taking the dog. That's that. Unless we're talking elite elite. And by the way, is Elon not like a slightly better looking Radford of North Carolina Colby? <laughs> like, tell me if I'm on point with that one. I like that. I like that comparison. I wonder if Kurt Warner is going to watch any, probably not. Cause his vagina would get injured. Right. Oh. But uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Elon, Elon has a good quarterback in Davis cheek though. Excited to watch that quarterback battle. Yeah, right. no, and and you're right. Elon has a good quarterback as well, but I think Davidson they got enough firepower to uh, make this a game. We were supposed to break down Northwestern oh. State at Lamar, but that game has been postponed. We almost canceled. I was I said, are we still going to do the the podcast? Because I knew Colby, <laughs> but we couldn't break down Northwestern State at Lamar. Uh, it would be devastating. This actually did not get canceled for COVID. It's a it's a snow cancellation of all things. I thought FCS were uh, were real men who played through any sort of conditions. Again, you know, where are we talking about? Some of these places are not they're not quite used to this kind of weather. So I think, you know, first of all, it's really embarrassing. Like we, like you you kind of nailed it, but the Southland Conference. Really need deep investigation because you canceled the football game because there's snow. Yeah. So without yeah, getting uh, too deep into that, um, but yeah, I mean, we didn't cancel the podcast. We uh, we will proceed. Yeah. Can, why, why couldn't they go old school on us? Like this is Beaumont, Texas, and I get it. There's a power outage, but the game can still be played. Someone yeah. with an iPhone can, have, can broadcast. Have you not right? seen Invincible? Kobe, Kobe, we're sending you on a road trip. Pull, the cars pull up <laughs> to the field. You turn the headlights on. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Moving on to a game that's actually happening in the Southern Conference in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Hell yeah. Wofford hosting Mercer. And uh, the Wofford Terriers lay in 16 at home. 
I, I, you know, Cole Kramer, you just laid out a case for why you should probably lean the dogs, but I'm, I'm going Wofford here. The Terriers, they won 41 to seven back in 2019. Uh, their ground game went uh, off for almost 400 yards. Yeah. Six players running for 40 yards or more. <laughs> I, I just think Mercer is in another class and it's not a good class. No. Wofford is dominant enough that they'll be able to take care of this big number pretty easily. Colby, so, are, you, are you with us? Uh, well, I, I'm actually on the other side. Look, th- before it was in the middle of a season, you get a month to prepare for triple option football. Mm. You get a month to prepare. Give me the points all day here, guys. Look, uh, it, it's it, we we, t- we hit it on this. It's colder temperatures. Look, and and getting six five six weeks to prepare, let alone all off season, knowing that you're going to be facing a triple option. Uh, give me Mercer to get it done. I think they want to avenge that. But I think Wofford still wins. Give me Mercer to cover this. Uh, now I did just say laying a big number would be but, crazy. Yeah, but as you also know, I'm a mm. SoCon specialist, and uh, furthermore. Wofford, the triple option, Colby, is the exact kind of offense that can put up silly video game numbers well, at Well, because they can levels. just control the game. And and since I have joined the fight, the Terriers, by the way, a very very uh, very <laughs> very mad, very cute mascot. It's just very <laughs> fierce looking. Uh, I did not find, a mascot that will likely get canceled. I found a uh, found a jersey on eBay. We'll see it's if it's my size. Uh, hopefully, I'll be donning it next. Week and Kramer's also, jealous. I'm also learning the the fight song, so well maybe a live a live performance. <laughs> All right, if Wofford covers for, the 16, coming. Kramer has to do the fight song live. Southern Illinois heads up to North Dakota. Grand folks, North North Dakota that is Southern Illinois lane two and a half in North Dakota. To be clear, this is not North Dakota State, which is dominant. This is a North Dakota regular, which is a two and a half point home dog against Southern Illinois. Uh, Colby, what's your handicap on this game? Well, I mean, both teams had the same record the last time they played a football season seven and five, but Southern Illinois resides in the Missouri Valley, which is the mm. best conference in college football guys. And Southern Illinois has a quarterback named stone. Labonowitz. Yeah, <laughs> love that name, Stone Labonowitz. That's got to be on Urban Dictionary, right? So I, I think that the ride here is to take the Salukis uh, minus the points in their. I, I believe this game's played in a dome as well. So I, I think Stone Labonowitz can can throw the ball all, all over the field. Now I will say, I will say that uh, North Dakota's got a, a solid quarterback themselves. So it'll be good to watch that match. Tommy Schuster, the quarterback of North Dakota. But uh, give me the Salukis, the more battle-tested team. Yeah, I mean uh, Southern Illinois again, doing my research here, aka copying shit on the internet. But no. I did do a little deep dive. Southern Illinois has a legit pass rush, yeah. but I'll tell you what North Dakota has. They have a legit home field advantage. Yeah. Colby brought up that uh, they were seven and five last year, six and zero oh <laughs> at home at the Alaris Center. Nice. So they are a team. I know you're against dome football, Colby, but this is a team that thrives in that dome there. I, I like them as a home dog catching two and a half. So give me North Dakota plus two and a half. Kramer. I mean it's break just, the tie here. You, think about it. It's so far from everything. The home field advantage is meaningful. And, and I think mm. You know, I, I think with some of these, I mean, it's basically in Canada, Sean. I mean, <laughs> it's on the border of northern Minnesota and northern uh, North Dakota. Uh, I think I think you play the home. F- I think it's disrespectful, probably, that they're they're catching points here. And I think you just play the situation. I, I know there's a lot of reasons why people like the what is it the Salukis? What is the Saluki? Uh, it's a dog, I believe. A, a t- kind of a uh, kind of like a, a see, farming I, dog, I think, or like it, take, Google that thing and uh, you'll see a photo of like it's kind of like a hound dog. I would say. Hmm, I like, thought you were gonna say a mix of body fluids. That's what I, a Saluki. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, don't don't underestimate the football gods here. There's a reason why dome teams hardly ever win Super Bowls. All right, the football gods know that that is a horrible, horrible thing that should never happen. So uh, right, give me this. Well. Uh, the but they're getting two and a half. What what more could no, you want? I'm with North Dakota. My governors <laughs> of Austin P <laughs> head on down to Cooksville, Tennessee to square off against Tennessee Tech. AP, you know what that stands for? Autoplay, aka Austin P. Oh, nice. I like that. 
I'll tell you what, Colby, when the sh- when the Sergeant York Trophy is up for grabs, Austin P comes to play. Give me a little uh Benico Hartley and D'Angelo Wilson receivers for Austin P who are really sharp. Austin P admittedly as a governor's fan, we have some issues on the defensive side of the ball, but we can put up some points. <laughs> I think we're going to be able to outscore Tennessee tech. If you can find a, uh, a, pl- a, a totals on this game, I like the over <laughs> here, but I certainly like Austin P laying six and a half. feel like it's going to be a little bit of a shootout. Colby. Are you, are you with me taking the road chalk here? Dude, I'm on Austin P all day. The quarterback Vito Pryor, Vito oh, Pryor. Yeah. This guy's gonna have a big day. And look, this team's played last year or the last time there was a football yeah. season. Uh, Tennessee Tech lost 58 to 21. Uh, and and you got to remember, Austin P played some 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 games in the fall, so way more battle tested yeah. here. Uh, I I'm 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 all over the governors here. Uh, I know stacking the money green is is in good company here. Well, well, and and you bring up an interesting point. A lot of these FCS teams, they either played one game, three games, or zero games. I do think there is something to a, te- a team that played three games in the fall, building a little chemistry. Even though a lot of these teams just got their ass kicked, I, I do think it will help them, especially huh. early in this FCS season. I mean, why do you think teams practice in the spring? That you know they yeah. want to get get a little bit of a head start. A little so mojo, I, little def- juju definitely matters. I think the governors take home the Sergeant York Trophy. Hell yeah. Sergeant York trophies coming home. <laughs> Sean, we need a replica next week if we take it home. Oh yeah. If you're if you're if there are any Austin fellow uh, governor fans listening to the podcast, please reach out. <laughs> we I want to create a group text. No. I will start a group text <laughs> with whatever it. Austin P uh listeners are of the podcast. What? You'll have my personal number. <laughs> unless you get annoyed and then I'll block you. But I what? want an Austin P group text. We need to get you on the local broadcast team. <laughs> Oh man, this should be a fun game. Tarleton State at New Mexico State. Oh. Obviously, Tarleton State coming off that brutal loss against McNeese State. They of course can't play the game in New Mexico. It is uh being played in I think El Paso. If I'm yeah. correct. Yeah, and uh New Mexico State. So this is a neutral field. New Mexico State lay in two. I think this all depends on how you think Tarleton State handled that loss. Either it was Oh man, this is our first game, and, and they lost in a brutal fashion. It's a dream crusher, or hey, like we're actually a pretty good team. I, uh, you know, even as a guy betting against Harleton State, I love what I saw out of their passing game. Certainly, some questions on the defensive side of the ball, but again, I, I feel like that was more of a outlier game as far as what happened. It, you know, even though I did lock up McNeese State and won credit for it. I I think Tarleton State. I I think they have a bounce back situation here. I'm going to take them getting the two points. Colby, where are you at with this game? Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I I was searching the internet trying to see if that special special teams coach got fired. Didn't happen. <laughs> did not happen. And so I mean, I I'm just counting on him being a true badass and just working them yeah. relentlessly all week. But one thing that Tarleton State. I mean, first off, their receivers stood out to me. They got some stud wideouts. Like Stephen Duncan, the the Western Kentucky transfer at quarterback. But what I hate is the two quarterback system. Hopefully they learn from those mistakes uh, because I thought that ruined the tempo of that offense. Yeah. And uh, uh, New Mexico State, though, I mean, this is a team that's an FBS, so you know they got more scholarship players than uh, than Tarleton. But at the same time, uh, look, the Tarleton State Texans are playing in Texas. You know I gotta go. With the Texans, who are what now twenty four and three in their past twenty seven games, got to go with Tarleton State here. Kramer, you guys are out of your mind. Let's do some math. Eighty five minus thirty six. Tarleton was Division two last year. Max thirty six scholarships. Division one program eighty five scholarships. That's just fifty guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's 50 guys different. And it's only a two points. Sp- I mean, I, I, teaser alert. This is a lock. Like this is, I know New Mexico state sucks, but, uh, and, and there's a very real possibility that Tarleton state, like they, they took this <laughs> the first game, not the best way, you know, like that was crushing. Not the Tarleton state. I know, but I think they're going to rally 51 or 49 scholarship difference. That has to matter on a football field. That has to matter. We'll like, see, Ryan. We'll see. Has to, you guys are crazy. And this, uh, the, this, uh, this game and the Austin P game are being played on Sunday. 
The other ones so far that we've hit on have uh, they've all been Saturday games. <laughs> There's a full three day weekend of FCS football. So go, don't worry. I go babe three night, three days of football this weekend. She looked at me like a fucking ghost was coming out of the TV. Oh man. And you want to get down on some uh, FCS football action. I know where you got to go. Better edge.com. Use that promo code SGP. Get a free $10 bets again, better edge. They have a stock market like setup. It allows you to bet with no VIG. Again, no VIG betting, completely legal in 40 states. I don't trust oh it. No VIG. No VIG. It's I not, prefer the VIG. Yeah. Sean. What? I mean, really? You know what? Better Edge, they don't have a casino in Vegas. You know why? Because they're not charging VIG. No. That's how these uh, big wig casinos. And uh, of course, we love uh, the circle, but I'm saying. All the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> how do they build these giant, you know, monstrosities? By taking your money, Better Edge. <laughs> it's a better way to bet. Just go to betteredge.com. Use a promo code SGP. No big betting. Legal in 40 states. It does not get better than that. Betteredge.com. Promo code SGP. Friday night. Wait, you guys, FCS. Hold on. You guys sure you don't want to change that Tarleton pick? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits. Northern Iowa. I, I'm calling this the game of the week. I mean, these are two teams. No. If anyone is going to give North Dakota State a run for their money, I mean, we're we're South Dakota State and Northern Iowa, two potential Final Four teams, five to one and six to one to win it all. Yeah, right up there uh, as as far as neck and neck for odds to win the championship. South Dakota State, you got Pierre Strong back to back one thousand yard seasons, beast of a running back. But on the Northern Iowa side. Yeah, quarterback Will McElvian and All American wide receiver Isaiah Weston for Northern Iowa. I mean, for me, it, it's as simple as take the home dog here. These are two really good teams. As much as I, I think the Jackrabbits are going to be tough at this current spread of uh, minus three for South Dakota State, I'm going to take Northern Iowa as the home dog. <laughs> There, there was a heated discussion in the Slack channel. Some people, <laughs> some people were seeing South Dakota State lay in two and a half. They were all over that. Colby, where are you at? Well, this game is 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 unbelievably compelling. I mean, look to paint the picture to the, to the audience here. The last time we had a f- non-COVID college football season for the FCS and the FBS, I uh, Northern Iowa went at Iowa State and really should have won a game. Lost in I think triple overtime because their kicker couldn't hit shit and. Uh, they were the better team. They were up majority of that game. And and then at the same time, South, I mean, that Iowa state team was a bowl team that played Notre Dame in the bowl. Uh, the, then that same South Dakota state team, the, the coyotes, I'm sorry, the, the Jackrabbits, they were playing at Minnesota, which went on to win like 10 games and beat Auburn in the Outback bowl. And they really botched their, their, like they were up by double digits. I want to say in the fourth quarter in about three minutes left, they were running the clock out and fumbled a snap which gave Minnesota life and w- they won that game. So just to give you an idea, these are two really good programs. I mean, Northern Iowa has, has been a, a, a powerhouse for like 30 or 40 years in the FCS. So I, I'm on Northern Iowa. This is another dome game. I hate to be back in a dome team. The God <laughs> should be against me. But look, when, it get, when you get down to it, their head coach, Mark Farley circle that with the exception of three years uh, from 97 to 2000, when he was a linebacker coach at Kansas, this guy has been a part of the Northern Iowa program since 1983. Uh, he knows defense played linebacker for them. So look, this guy is 17 and 12 playoff record, 159 and 83 overall. And look <laughs> last year, last year, these guys met twice. They split, but Northern Iowa won in the playoffs. So uh, give me Northern Iowa with the whole off season to prep. Love their defense, like that quarterback. Um, but this is going to be a great game. Can't wait to watch this one. Give me the home dog, though. Yeah, I mean Friday night, and it's a uh, eight o'clock East Coast kick. This, I mean, this is could be the game of the week. I understand why they flex it to Friday night. I love in college sports. I love taking a prime time home dog. And Northern Iowa fits that bill. Kramer, are you with us? Are you going to lay the road uh, chalk? I'm with, the with you. Uh, let's let's just call it out as as, uh, as I've been told by the internet. Matthew Cook is a good kicker. Hmm. This game comes down to a late. Uh, why field not goal. take that plus three? Comes down to a late field goal. They get it done. 
Let, let's go Panthers. Let's fucking go. Morehead State heads to James Madison, mm. and you can see why they buried this. Patty C. Nine a.m. Patty C. He's on the. Uh, I think he's on the reserve COVID list in case there's a COVID <laughs> outbreak. Uh, Patty C. will be will be there. <laughs> he's the coach calling the game from the uh, the crane two blocks. He's in away. one of those hamster bubbles. They're just keeping him there, keeping him away from the program in case there's an outbreak. This spread's insane, Colby. It's forty two and a half, and somehow we're talking about this game. You know they're they're on that right side of the key number 42. <laughs> I'm going to take James Madison lane 42 and a half just because there's a reason they're setting this at 42 wow. and a half uh, begging you to take the yeah. dog. That half point is the <laughs> <laughs> I, I really think that's what's going on. So uh, I'm going to go mind you the last game we broke down the total was 42 points. So holy shit. Exactly. And go Bearcats pointing out in the YouTube chat that this you and I game should have been the uh, should have been the opener, but you really can't complain with the action you saw no. at McNeese State, uh, Tarleton. No. Colby, are you riding JMU? Why? Why did this? Why, first off, why did this game make the sheet? Uh, well, every game made the sheet for this week. Next week oh, it gets nice. a little more. Tasty. Yeah, um, and and look, Morehead State was five and seven a season ago. Now, at the same time, I understand your question because they, they played number 16, Illinois state last year, but it was week two or the last time they had a football season, they lost 42 to 14. So they would have covered that Illinois state was a playoff team. Uh, they did have another bad loss though at Murray state 59 to seven. But at, other than that, they played like they played some other decent opponents and kept it relatively close. I mean, when I say relatively close, meaning three touchdowns. So I'm going to say Morehead state. Look, JMU is breaking in a brand new quarterback. Now, granted, he's the fifth year senior. Brand new quarterback. It's going to be cold as shit, guys. Harrisonburg, Virginia. I've been down there. I know you have, Kramer. That that's a cold little town, man. So, uh, let me do a quick uh weather update. I'm seeing as of right now, it's 24 degrees, but I could just see that being a nightmare. They're not used to playing in that. Now, 23 degrees. Chance of snow right now. Start at midnight. I don't know what the game would be, but uh Give me, give me, uh, give me the, the big number. Give me the forty-two and a half. <laughs> and, and I'm seeing a total of fifty-three and a half. Like, how do you even fit a score in there? This does feel like a game Kansas <laughs> would be involved in. Are we sure they're not? Are they the Kansas of uh, FCF? I said, Red State. I said you're not supposed to take. I mean, can they replace Danucci? We saw. <laughs> We say he got a he got a chance. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I forgot Danucci. The, the ghost of Danucci running around JMU. I mean. Uh, you you have you got to take forty two and a half, right? You, aren't <laughs> no. you supposed to take forty two and a half? I know it's a key number, but the fact that they have made it forty two and a half means there's no way that James Madison I, doesn't cover. I just think that it's weird that they're starting the season in the cold of winter and like it's going to be hard to thrash teams. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this will. Maybe I'll be proven wrong comically in this one. But I'll take the points. I don't think Morehead State's gonna want to get off that bus. You, you're oh. talking about the cold ride. You know what's warm <laughs> and toasty? That bus. You know what's not? The field <laughs> over at James Madison. And they're gonna be they're gonna be warm off adrenaline and destroying a team. J Jam. And they're gonna be on TV. Jam. When was the last time that happened? <laughs> they're gonna be streaming on ESPN Plus. Everyone's gonna be using Colby's password. <laughs> <laughs> Moving over back to uh Sunday, uh Sunday afternoon action, 12:30 uh West Coast kick, Youngstown State head into the uh the presumptive favorites for the FCS championship, North Dakota State. The Bison lay in 23 at home. Zeb Nolan time. That's Ooh, what everyone's calling Zeb, it. Trey Trey Zeb. Lance, of course, foregoing the season to uh head over to the NFL draft. Nobody expects Youngstown State to be in this game. Is that the is that the correct assumption, Colby? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're basing it off of last year's thing. But if you, I mean, if you look, Youngstown State's talk about a team that's been an, another for forty years, been a great program. Now they've they've struggled some lately for their for their standards, but they've still been a a, a good team. So I, I mean, I think the play here. I know they're breaking in. Their last coach was Bo Pelini. He left and went to LSU and, and survived there for about what eight games, and then uh, got fired. But uh, I, I I just think there's this number's too big. I mean, I had on my show the College Experience. I had I had a guy on that that uh, covers the FCS, and and I, off air he was telling me he's a big North Dakota State fan, but he thinks it's their worst team they've had 
in a long time, but they could still win the national championship, of course, but they're really unproven at a lot of positions. So I, I think the play is to, t- I mean, you look at North Dakota or I'm sorry, yeah, Youngstown state's schedule from last year. I mean, they lost by seven to Northern Iowa. They lost by 10 to South Dakota state. Now North Dakota state did smack them 56 to 17, but I, I expect them. I, I think this North Dakota state team clearly not the same as that, that team uh, with two projected first round picks going to be gone. Also Jabril Cox, the starting linebacker of LSU gone. Give me uh give me Youngstown to cover. I'm with Colby. I, although the uh, cream rises to the top theory around uh, COVID times and less preparation does make sense. Uh, I also think it's not nothing that you just lose a guy to, to the draft, especially yeah. when he's a first rounder. So, uh, y- you know, it, it's, it's nice to say, I'm, and we could look stupid again. Like I'm, I'm looking, you know, I was, I was re as you were talking Colby, I was noticing that the last time Moorhead state played James, James Madison, they beat him 80 to seven. And I was like, Oh, well maybe I'm not so f- feeling so good about the 42 and a half. Uh, Youngstown. I mean, anytime I think of Youngstown, all I think about is that Trestle uh, Maurice Claret documentary, and think about like, God damn, I wouldn't want to bet against that fucking place. So I'm not betting against that fucking place against those those filthy. What are we calling them now? Now that you're no longer into Carson oh, Wentz, the you're not North Bison. You're not North Dakota strong anymore. No. So we're not, you're not obligated to pick them. North Dakota soft. You're free. The ginger <laughs> Judas has been expelled. I I kind of like. Uh, I like the scrappiness of Youngstown State as a college and as a uh, part yeah, of the country. I like it, and I think there is something we see this all the time with like the presumptive favorites and and hey, we're just gonna walk in. Everyone's already handing the bison in the championship. Oh wow! Meanwhile, a scrappy Youngstown State comes to town, and <laughs> I think if you're in North Dakota State, it's easy to look past Youngstown State and to cover a 23 point spread. All you need is one or two big plays. Couple, couple stops, a couple of uh, Zeb Nolan, maybe not not ready for the bright lights in the Carrier Dome or uh, whatever it's called. What's North Dakota State's uh, it's stadium? The, it's the Wells Fargo. Center. Wells Fargo Center, Carrier Dome's uh, Syracuse. But uh, I I think he could be a little bit overwhelmed. It's just such high expectations for him to immediately take over where Trey Lance left off and just dominate. So I definitely think there's some value in Youngstown State catching this big number. Sean, it's called Bank Field at the Fargo Dome. Now what the fuck? Why do they do that? <laughs> trying to get it's like that the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Yeah, <laughs> no one's gonna. No one's gonna up. go. What? No one's ever gonna call it that. Well, I mean, yeah. Don't be don't be a bunch of assholes and move the team to Anaheim. All right. Samford heads the Johnson City, Tennessee, where they're squaring off against East Tennessee State. Samford. Samford. Let me I gotta speak to Samford. No. Yep. The Bulldogs. They're heading to Eastern Tennessee State. They are laying through or sorry, six. Kickoff Saturday, ten AM West Coast. What are we doing here, Colby? Look, I wanted to, I was originally, I was going to say, Hey, the Buccaneers of East Tennessee state. Uh, but look, the, the, this, these teams played a year ago and Samford won by seven Samford. was a little bit better. Both teams had a losing record, but I think as a podcast, we are obliged to take Samford mm. because their head coach, not air only raid. air raid played under uh, Mike Leach and uh, how and also coached under Mike Leach and Hal Mummy at Kentucky. Uh, look, you got it. You got to take. We got to go. We, uh, Sanford's got a money quarterback, Chris uh, Uladakan. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that name, but he's going to throw the ball all over the field. Can't wait to watch the air raid just destroy this Buccaneer defense in Johnson City. Throw that big Johnson in the air. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, you know, I, I read oh, a preview that uh, it basically said, "Hey, Sanford's a better football team," but. The kickers on Eastern Tennessee, they're great. And that's going to be the difference. I was like, oh, sweet. So I'm definitely, <laughs> definitely taking Sanford. Air Raid, of course, we support the Air Raid, Sean. Air Raid certified. Air Raid. Cer- Colby is still working on his degree over yeah, there. We tried Raid to send Colby certified. back to school. We offered him a full ride, a full I'm Air Ride shirting. scholarship. I'm redshirting. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. And Sanford really has owned them 3 0 the last three. They have some issues on the defensive side of the ball. Samford, again, like a lot of these air raid teams, can they figure out how to play defense? But I don't think mm. they will need to against Eastern Tennessee State. Pretty, 
shitty Eastern Tennessee State team, especially this year. And I, I think they just cruise. Again, well, if you're looking to, if you can get down on the total here, uh, I like the over in Sanford, Eastern Tennessee State. Well, and in Johnson City, it's snowing on Thursday and Friday. Saturday starts to get sunny, perfect for the air raid offense. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need a little bit of sunny and a uh, little sunny weather. You're ready to go. Western Carolina heads down to Greensville. South Carolina mm. square off against Furman. Furman, a huge favorite, 23 points. Furman is one of the teams that played three games in the fall. And again, pro, you know, not amazing results as you would expect, but they Western played. Carolina has trouble putting points on the board. I'm actually going big chalk here again. I'm going to take Furman laying the big number, but I think the under actually, if you're looking again to get involved in totals and why would you not Hashtag Dejans only for this Saturday FCS action. I I think Furman wins. The Furman Paladins. They cover. <laughs> yeah, no idea what a paladin is. They win. They cover. But <laughs> I cast a <laughs> Colby. The dungeon master needs to come out and play. <laughs> they win. They cover. But it's not a. Uh, <laughs> it's not a pretty game. How are you going to be the Paladins? That's what is a paladin, Colby? It's a uh, don't start lying. If I had to guess, it would have to do something with like uh badminton. <laughs> it's, a, it's a, it's a sorcerer of sorts, right? Someone that can cast a spell that needs some mana. <laughs> and we were going to need this mana to cover this 23 point spread. Get the eye of newt and a, uh, you know, a cauldron where we will stir up these uh, ingredients. Uh, it's more like witch. That's more okay. like Wiccan. You know? Well, sorry. I didn't, I didn't have my wizard references. <laughs> what do they wear? A giant pointy hat and have some sort of yeah, a little, uh, little of this, a little of that. Yeah. The dude long ass beard, a staff. All right, Colby, <laughs> we're off the rails here. Western Carolina Furman talk us into the game. I mean, this one's compelling because once again, Furman, you know, uh, I, I know they play Alabama every year, so we should all lean Furman because they, I feel like they've given them actually, or they, they beat Georgia tech. I think what a uh, season ago, oh, no, that was the Citadel. That was the Citadel, but battle Furman, tested though. Yeah. And, and they got a good quarterback in Hamp Sisson, but they run the triple option. So it's compelling because you say, well, they've had six months to prepare for the triple option. Uh, it's, it's tricky. To, and another thing is the triple option burns the clock. I'm going to say, give me the catamounts and the points here, but I think Furman wins, but it's just too many points with the triple option team. Yeah. So you're going against the triple option team. I like the angle of taking Furman because they played the three games in the fall. That is enough uh, for me. And again, I think I, I hear Colby's angle, the triple option, but I think early on in the season, your conditioning may not be fully there. A triple option team can well, just wear you down. Also, triple option team, I'm gonna guess, is gonna be more prepared than the other. T- Colby, how many teams run the triple option at the FCS level? Uh, well, the, in this in this version of the FCS yes. level, you mean? Yes. Uh, I think it's. I think we're looking at three. I okay. think we're looking so, at yeah, Wofford, the Citadel, and Furman, I believe. Mm, okay, so I'll have to get involved with the sit. That's okay. I think I'm going to blindly bet the triple option until it loses. <laughs> VMI <laughs> might run the triple option, but they're not playing this weekend. But I believe they might run the triple Give option me as well. Furman, I'll lay the points here. Yeah, I, I like taking I the, the triple, triple option early. <laughs> early, I, I see Colby's angle of plenty of time to prepare, but I <laughs> I think it works the other way for the triple option team. They know their offense. Sean, they're going to be dialed in. Sean, we're going to have a film session tomorrow breaking down the triple option. I'm on board. Another a Sunday game, last of the slate, 11 a.m. West Coast kick, Eastern Illinois, laying 13 and a half in Martin, Tennessee. Uh, I, I butch, I, I I messed this up. It's actually uh, Tennessee Martin laying 13 and a half. So Eastern Illinois catching 13 and a half. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say that seemed. Uh, <laughs> my numbers weren't computing here. I had it at a uh, 11 and a half. Tennessee Martin, a 13 and a half. Point home favorite, you know Eastern Illinois. They did uh, keep it close last year. Are they as bad as their one and eleven record uh, last time they played a full season? Would lead you to believe, Colby, because I, I think they're not quite that bad. But thirteen and a half, all things considered, not a huge spread for week one. Where do you where do you got this game at? I'm gonna go with the Eastern Illinois, despite it being Tony Romo's alma mater. I was mother, gonna say I, yeah. Jim. I that think the is play a disgusting act. <laughs> I think the play they're breaking in a new head coach first off. And, and you know, this was a nine point game. 
uh, essentially two years ago, but the last time they, these guys had a football season. Um, and, and I just think you look at their schedule, you know, I understand they they, were, they only won one game, but they had some close games. They had, they lost some close Murray state by seven, a- Indiana state, who was an FCS playoff team by, by 10. Um, so I think they're a little bit better and obviously new coach brings in new system and everything. So they're going to buy in. Give me a, uh, give me Eastern Illinois. What are they? The Panthers? I think am I, am I, I could be you're, butchering that. You're going to bet against the Skyhawks. <laughs> oh man. Skyhawks is a badass name. I'm fading Tony. Romo. Yeah, what? Come on, Sean. Let's give me go. UTM lay in the big number. Uh, and we can, we it, Tony Romo and <laughs> Jimmy G. Yeah. Two guys that are two pretty assholes. Annoying. Yeah. Come on. Colby, I mean, what more handicapping do you need in this game except Eastern Illinois? Not gonna get it done. UT Martin all the way. Let's go, baby. All right, uh, we are gonna do the lock, dog, tease, and bonus game. Before we do, want to shout out Better Than Vegas. You want free video picks? I'm sure we'll be giving out some FCS football action. I've been putting my picks up on Saturday. Kramer's a Sunday. Colby, it's uh, whatever day he remembers to log in. <laughs> Plenty of free video picks over on Better Than Vegas. It's like YouTube, but it's YouTube if it was just about sports gambling. Free video picks from the whole SGPN crew. Subscribe to our profile. Again, completely free. Get a notification every time a new video drops. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That'll direct you right to our page. Hit that subscribe button. Smash the subscribe button, as the kids say. Better than Vegas. Completely free. Video picks. You can even uh, get your own profile going. Shout out to XFL Jim, who's just been dominating the uh, the leaderboard here and uh, views. So good. Better than Vegas. It's uh, it's just awesome. So good. Better than dot Vegas and uh, our page sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash B T V. Shout out to the YouTube chat, uh, John. Uh, Paladin is a knight on a horse. So yeah, maybe not casting spells. Who knows? Knights know. are just really next on the list right. to be canceled. I thought knights were on horses though. Yeah. What did he say? <laughs> A paladin's a knight on a horse. I thought a knight was already on a horse. No, but it's we a need specific, a full investigation. It's a specific type. I don't of buy it. I'm googling. Knight. All right, time for the lock dog tease. Happy birthday, Colby. Since you're remote, I'll let you go first. What is your lock dog and tease? I am locking your governors as my best wow. play. Come also, on, Colby. Five, six and a half. Uh, come on! It's, uh, you, you, you can't go away from that. Are you, you kidding me? You let him go first. I'm wearing no. the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let you take it. Uh, uh, my my dog is gonna be none other than than uh, I, I gotta go. I gotta go Northern Iowa here, guys. I think that's the, the play is to take Northern Iowa here to get it done. Uh, my tease is going to be let's take North Dakota. Or let's take Youngstown State up to twenty nine. Right. And then let's go. Uh, let's take <laughs> my Samford down to straight up at a pick. Okay. Samford getting it done. Um, and let's go. Uh, let's, let's, let's ride with, uh, I'm going to take 29 and Western <laughs> Carolina. Okay. 29 and West Carolina. That's the number. My COVID game is going to be. <laughs> so you're teasing Samford. Western Carolina up to 29. Okay. <laughs> Youngstown 29 and, uh, and Samford at a pick. My my COVID game is going to also be. Oh wow! Uh, let give let's go. I, I, let's go uh, the the Mercer game. The the Mercer game I'll take as a uh, as potentially COVID game. And my bonus game, guys. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a couple lines not out there. There's oh, okay. a Friday night game being played, but between uh, between Nichols on Friday, but there's also on Sunday Edward Waters at Jackson State. <laughs> Deion Sanders. <laughs> Had the 85th best recruiting class in the nation, which never happens at the FCS ranks. You never get that that high. So uh, he's starting his son at quarterback, and they have some real talent that came into that program. They're taking on Edward Waters, which is one of the worst programs. Uh, I mean, I didn't know who Edward Waters was. I think they're D three, D two, something like that. But um, uh, give me Jacksonville State. Let's just make up a line and say minus 45. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you'll lay the points no matter what it is. Jacksonville State. Dion knows the spread for sure, right? 
<laughs> prime. Prime. Time. We're talking about prime. All right, Kramer. What are you doing? Lock dog uh, tease. I mean, I you're so you're telling me I can lock up an FBS school laying less than a field goal, uh, kind of at home. I yeah, come on. Okay. Let's go. New we're Mexico gonna, State we're gonna, minus the, we're gonna fade the Texans uh, for my dog. Uh, JMU sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I am, I, I am going to someone, there's going to be a big dog, right? One of these big dogs is going to get it done. Uh, I'm going to say Davidson shocks the world uh, takes down Elon. Uh, what will that be? Sean seven to one. Oh, uh, 18. Yeah. It's going to be six huge. to one. Uh, we'll see. I mean, that will be a fun lottery ticket and for the tease. Let's uh let's do a uh let's do a triple option teaser. Let's do Wofford minus ten, crossing that key number of twelve <laughs> and eleven. Uh let's throw uh Furman in there down to seventeen. I like that. Just cruising just cruising over all the important numbers. And uh you know what? Game of the day, let's take Northern Iowa up to nine. You and I up to nine and uh COVID game. Or do you do you have a? Uh, well, my COVID game. Uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's toss the uh, the Samford game in there. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna say that it's Tennessee. Who knows what's going on over there? And the bonus lock. Uh, I you know what? I came in here saying you got to take the points every time. You got to take the points every time. But I, I'm gonna lay it with my Wofford Terriers. Let's go. I, I need the fights. I don't know it, but I'll know it next week, so I can. I can. So you're keeping it. a. Uh, you're going. Normally, we don't allow the bonus lock to be on the sheet. Well, Ryan, we, just there's, so. there's no games really off the sheet. Well, I mean, Colby, Colby, Colby <laughs> clearly dug one up. <laughs> all right, you want me to? T- all right, no, I'm no. also no. I'm gonna stay on the sheet. Stay with, stay with your, stay uh, with, with your thing. With my heart and all right. my terriers. For my lock, I'm gonna go Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa <laughs> plus three. It's Colby stole my Austin P. Uh, Guys, there's there's still Lincoln, Missouri at Nichols Friday, so oh. you can say that minus the points. All right. <laughs> uh, for my <laughs> dog, uh, let's see. You know what? Oh, you know I I do like Take North Youngstown's, Dakota bro. at. Youngtown, Youngstown yeah, State, do it. plus Fu- twenty three. Carson Wentz is out the fucking door. All right, dude, it's week one of a crazy season. We're you're about right. To experience. You're talking me into a major dog. Ten to one. I would, I would normally take if I wasn't uh, bitter at Carson Wentz. I would normally take a uh, Tarleton State just to spite Kramer, but instead I'll spite <laughs> my greater enemy, and that is Carson Wentz. Youngstown State, let's go, baby. For my tease, this T. Tea, I mean, this is easy. Sanford, get that down to a pick. Furman down to 17. And Austin P laying a half, essentially a money line bet there. For my uh <laughs> for my bonus game. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Austin P laying six and a half for go. my bonus lock. I like it. For my COVID game, Eastern Illinois, and hopefully, well, and probably uh, you know, Tony Romo already had COVID. Maybe he spread it to some of the uh, alumni at Eastern Illinois in an event, and maybe that'll cause a COVID outbreak. We hope it doesn't. We hope everyone stays safe. But uh, unfortunately, we have to pick these COVID games. It's it's, it's a sports it, gambling regulation, and we're licensed by a number of uh, operators. So. Yeah, it's in the uh, it's in the contract. It's unfortunate. We have to pick it's these. Part of the deal, man. Uh, make sure to check out again double duty. Make sure to check out the uh, e- Carson Wentz trade emergency podcast. We we started predicting what we thought NFL win totals will be. Great interview with a gold medal curler as well. Colby, what's happening on the college experience? Well, we got you covered for everything. Huge weekend in college basketball. A one seed, projected one seeds at the moment right now. Michigan, Ohio State scheduled to do battle Sunday in Columbus. Big 12 got some huge matchups. Texas Tech, Kansas, Texas, West Virginia, and uh, and and other big time matchups. So uh, yeah, subscribe. I, me and NC Nick just covered it. You got to check it out. All right. Love it. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second Money Green, and he is Ryan. Your fun fact about the FCS this week is the Youngstown State coaching staff offers us Ashton Yabuti. Sean, you'll remember him from Ohio State in college, was drafted 2006 in the third round. Kramer, let it ride. Oh, hot, 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 hot.